Nauru, why Australia is funding an empty detention centre. Australia's controversial detention centre on Nauru is empty after the last remaining refugee was evacuated into the night last week. It poses over a decade of Australia's processing of asylum seekers on the tiny Pacific nation, with 4,183 people held there since 2012. Described as a place of indefinite despair and sustained abuse by visitors from Tessin's Science Frontiers and Human Rights Watch, the Nauru Centre is a clone in the side of Australia's human rights record. Yet offshore processing ash which involves detaining people in the Pacific while they await resettlement in a third country dash remains one of Australia's most enduring policies. Seven consecutive Prime Ministers have argued for its role in protecting the nation's borders and breaking the business model of human traffickers. Despite the facility sitting vacant, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's government will spend vast sums of money dash including 486 million Australian dollar, 255 million, 320 million dollar this year dash to keep Nauru open as a deterrent. Life in Limbo Mariah knows what it feels like to be airlifted off Nauru at short notice. She was evacuated to Sydney in 2014 due to a severe kidney issue after being detained on the island for over a year. A survivor of female genital mutilation from Somalia, Maria escaped civil war before making a week's long journey by plane and then boat to Australia. Just promise me, don't die. Her younger brother had pleaded as she left the family home for the last time. That broke me, because we have lots of neighbours and cousins who have died in the Mediterranean, says Mariah, who does not want to give her son name. Her time at sea felt never-ending, Mariah tells the BBC. The boat was tiny like a kayak and its dozens of passengers had no toilet. I was hallucinating because I was so sick. I kept thinking about my brother. And how I didn't want to lie to him, eventually they were picked up by the Australian Navy Dash and ultimately transferred to Nauru. Mariah's memories of the island door vivid and intense. She describes having cut up and burned feet after walking on sharp stones without shoes in searing heat. The humidity left her tent covered in green and black mold which grew on everything, she adds. She learned to move in groups and ignore public sexual propositions from men within the camp. Dehumanizing treatment, such as being watched in the shower or rationed out sanitary pets by goods, became the norm, Mariah says. There were a lot of inappropriate relationships between the goods and the generals. You're a refugee, but they looked at you like you were in a prison. After leaving Nauru, Maria was detained in Sydney. Before finally being released on a bridging visa, she now runs a business in Brisbane, where she lives with her Australian husband and two children. But her visa requires renewal every six months and she lives in terror of being taken away from her family and placed back in detention. It's limbo. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. A quiet pivot countless refugees have shared stories of suffering like Mariah's since of shore processing began in 2008. It was introduced by a conservative Prime Minister, John Howitt. When he left office in 2007, the policy was suspended by Kevin Rudd's Labour government before being resumed dash also under Labour dash in 2012, initially as a stopgap measure following a spike in boat crossings. Successive politicians defended the policy as key to protecting Australia's borders and saving lives at sea. But researchers have argued it did little to curb by the maritime arrival so diffs. Both dropped from Doha words when the government quickly shifted to boat turn backs dash and approved that removes migrant vessels from more Australian waters and sends those on board back to their countries of departure. All new elevators to the offshore detention centres on Nauru and Manus Island in Papua New Guinea (PNG) ceased after that pivot. And since then, Australia has spent considerable effort and money trying unsuccessfully to extract itself from its arrangements in Nauru and PNG. A 2021 review of offshore detention from the Calder Centre for International Refugee Law found.
mounting accusations of health crisis among detainees prompted Australia to evacuate people from the Icelands under a special legislative scheme. As a result, everyone has been taken off Nauru, but the sea people formerly detained by the government remain trapped in PNG, according to the Human Rights Law Centre. Over the past decade, every expert on body tasked with reviewing offshore processing has expressed concerns about the policy. 14 people have died in detention, about half through suicide. In 2020, the International Criminal Court, ICC, called Australia's policies unlawful and degrading but said they did not warrant prosecution. Despite quickly shifting away from offshore processing, Australia recently signed a charge of 22 million Australian dollar contract with a prison company to oversee Nauru until at least 2025. The entering capability ensures regional processing arrangements remain ready to receive and process any new and authorised maritime arrivals. Future proofing Australia's response to maritime people smuggling, a spark is person for the Department of Home Affairs said. Mr Albanese has not commented on the lost detainee living Nauru. His government has described its asylum seekers policies as tough on borders, not weak on humanity. Critics argue offshore processing will remain a costly bipartisan policy on paper as long as refugees are being used to try and win votes. People seeking asylum by sea have been weaponized and politicized over decades in Australia, says John Favreau, director of advocacy at Asylum Seeker Resource Centre. But Ms Favreau and other critics believe public sentiment towards deterrence-based border control is shifting. She celebrates the loss evacuation from Nauru as a long overdue move for refugees born out of tireless advocacy. What we saw at the last election was a rejection of fear-based politics, she says. Piling seems to capture some shift in attitudes towards immigration. In 2017, when asked whether refugees in Nauru and PNG should be allowed to settle in Australia, 45% agreed while 40% said no, according to the Lowy Institute think tank. This year, it's polling found. Arsat percent agreed that openness to people from all over the world is essential to who we are as a nation, a Pandra increase from 2018. Maraya, who has found herself caught in the crashes of the government's policy, says life for now is about coexisting with uncertainty that because so little has changed over time. It's been thus years already, at this point, I feel like I'm used to it, she explains. I live my life as much as I can, but there are some days when I'm overwhelmed, and I think why me thank you for watching my video, for more videos stay connected and must subscribe.